Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Curry, filling in for Joy Taylor. On today's show, are we on the verge of a Brady-Belichick breakup? Plus, Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson stops by to make his Super Bowl pick. And is there any chance Cam Newton can pull off an upset against the Saints this weekend? Skip and Shannon, let's get to it. Well, let's start with the Patriots drama, guys. Months of frustration between Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and Robert Kraft were revealed in a new piece by ESPN's Seth Wickersham. A main part of the problem was Brady's trainer, Alex Guerrero, who had many of his team privileges taken away earlier this year. Belichick reportedly also wanted to keep Jimmy Garoppolo, but was mandated by Robert Kraft in October to trade him, which made Belichick furious. Belichick then texted Kyle Shanahan and gave Garoppolo away for a second round pick. And the big question from all of this is whether Belichick will walk away after this season instead of dealing with another year of drama. Shannon, Mm. what is your takeaway from all of that? Skip, I don't think anybody should be surprised, at least you and I are not, because we always felt the way it was shaping up, Mm -hmm. Coach Belichick was grooming Jimmy Garoppolo to be the bridge from Tom Brady into the future moving forward. Yep. Now, you mean to tell me a man and Coach Belichick, he's the great, I believe he's the greatest, all that with all the, you know, I understand about Deflate Gate and Spygate, but I believe he's the greatest coach to ever coach in the NFL. He's the greatest situational coach in NFL history. So you mean to tell me a man that prepares his team for every possible scenario is willing not only to trade one, but two quarterbacks? And you're like, okay, the bridge for the future now is Hoyer, Brian Hoyer, a guy that's been cut by seven different teams, he's going to be the bridge Mm -hmm. from Tom Brady into the future. You know Coach Belichick wouldn't do that, Skip. Coach Belichick believed in Jimmy Garoppolo. He saw exactly in Jimmy Garoppolo what he saw in Tom Brady, and he was unwilling. If you notice, Skip, Tom Brady says, I want to play into my mid-40s, maybe late 40s. Robert Kraft said Mm -hmm. on several times, Tom Brady has told him he wanted to play into his mid to late 40s. The one guy that never echoed that sentiment is who, Skip Bayless? Coach. (laughs) Bill Belichick said, said, we'll see. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why coaches don't get close to players. There are two things, Skip, in professions, three things, a head coach, a trauma surgeon or a police officer, you can't be emotional because they're gonna, you're gonna see, de- in, in trauma, you're gonna see stuff that if you get emotional, that's gonna hinder you from doing your job. That's correct. If you're a police officer, you're gonna come and con- you're gonna encounter things that if you're emotional, that's gonna hinder you from doing your job, exactly as a head coach. Mm-hmm. If you become too attached to the players, it's gonna hinder you from doing your job. This is a cutthroat business. Mm-hmm. You're gonna sometime have to cut all time great players. Coach Belichick understands that very, very well. Now, he traded, he traded Jacoby Brissett first. So you mean to tell me, Skip Bayless, the team that turned you into the NFL, you're going to do a deal with him? Skip, I can't do no deal with you. Mm-hmm. And then you, a receiver. Philip Dorsett, by all indications, all indications by every metric mm-hmm. or analytics you want to use, yep. has been a bust. What team you know trades a quarterback for a busted wide receiver? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then here we come to Jimmy Garoppolo. If you notice what Tom Brady said last week when they broached him the question, he said, Jimmy worked really, really hard in practice, and it's nice to see hard work pay off. Not one time did he say anything about his relationship, how he helped Jimmy, because this is what we know, Skip, and I've always told people this, and they look at me Mm side-eyed. Quarterbacks have the biggest egos. They are the most sensitive of any player in the NFL. They do the best job of hiding it. Jimmy Garoppolo was a direct threat to Tom Brady, as was Steve Young to Joe Montana, as was Aaron Rodgers to Brett Favre. No doubt. Now, if you look at the guys that they had great relationship, Brett Favre had a great relationship with Ty Detmer. John Elway had a great relationship with Gary Kubiak. Mm-hmm. Not so much with Tommy Maddox, because I happened true. to be there. You were there. Those are direct threats. Mm-hmm. Brett Favre made it known, it's not my job to get Aaron Rodgers ready to play. Correct. So, Skip, no one should be surprised by this. I believe Coach Belichick, win, lose, or draw, was ready to move on after this season without Tom Brady. And this is the first time I also believe in this relationship that Coach that Mr. Kraft, the owner of the team, gave Bill Belichick a direct order. Mm -hmm. You will move Jimmy Garoppolo Mm -hmm. because uh, Mr. Kraft has said it on very, very numerous occasions. Yep. 
that he viewed Tom Brady like a son. He views him as a Jonathan Kraft, who you always see him sitting up in the booth. You see Jonathan Kraft sitting next Dude. to him. He viewed Tom Brady in that same light. Correct. He told Belichick, I understand what you've done. Yep. But you will trade Jimmy Garoppolo. You will. That start, that st mm -hmm. This has been brewing for a while, Skip. This has been brewing for a while. Coach Belichick had no problem moving on from Ryan Mallett, Brian mm -hmm. Hoyer, Rohan David, and every other quarterback that they've taken yep. since Tom Brady's been there. This is the one guy he was clutching, and his knuckles were white because he mm -hmm. didn't want to let them go. Correct. So, to your initial point, you and I discussed this the entire offseason, <laughs> and I kept saying this is going to be the biggest story in the National Football League next season, which is now this past season. Yes. And it never quite came to a head because we didn't know enough about what was going on behind closed doors. But we could see the fact that finally it sure looked like Robert Kraft had to pick a side, coach or quarterback, and he picked his quote-unquote son going forward because son says he wants to play until he's 45. And by the way, it looks like son, Tom Brady, is about to win the MVP. So did he back up? Yeah, I think he backed it up this year. So... Big picture, Robert Kraft mandates that Bill Belichick must trade Jimmy G. And he also had already traded Brissett, to your point. So, my biggest takeaway from all this is that, I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to be careful with what I say here. But there is some scoundrel in Bill Belichick. Some scoundrel. We saw what happened with Spygate. Mm -hmm. He got busted straight up by an assistant of his named Eric Mangini, who just blew the whistle on him because he said, don't do it to me. If you do it to me, I'm going to call you in. And he called him in. And Spygate developed. Yes. And there were two teams that played the Patriots in the first two Super Bowls, both of whom accused Bill Belichick of spying on their walkthroughs on the Saturday before. Now, did, did it happen? I don't know. They were adamant about it in both cases, St. Louis Rams, Carolina Panthers, just for the record. And I've always said about Bill Belichick, how could you be such a great coach and need to resort to this? I don't know, but there's some scoundrel in him. I believe that this piece mostly came from Bill Belichick. Maybe not directly, maybe it was second and third hand, but Bill Belichick, for a fact, has relationships with various NFL reporters in high places. He won't talk to them on the record, but he will talk to them off the record. And that's how this reads to me. This did not come from Tom Brady, and it did not come from Robert Kraft. And it will be interesting to see if Brady and or Kraft respond to some of the quote-unquote allegations I'll in this piece. No. I say no. Maybe because they're on the cusp of be they're, they're favored to win a sixth Super Bowl. Correct. So... To me, my final takeaway from all the above is that Bill Belichick, according to sources, and I think this is coming pretty much from him, was angry and disillusioned when he was told by the owner, you must trade Jimmy Garoppolo. And he responded by rebelling against the organization. It feels like he sabotaged the organization going forward because he decided he didn't want to be a long-term part of the organization. So my gut feeling is I will not be surprised if Bill... It, it depends somewhat on the outcome of the next month, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be surprised if Bill Belichick is coaching elsewhere, and the most obvious landing spot for him right now would be the New York Giants, mm -hmm. where he has history, where he was the coordinator oh, yeah. and won Super Bowls with Parcells. Correct. And... When I look back at how this unfolded, and there are a couple of little bombshell details I did not know, but let's look at Jimmy G, because let's look at Kyle Shanahan. You know the father very well, Mike Shanahan. This points out something I did not know, that Belichick was always beholden to Mike because Mike stepped up and personally vouched for Bill Belichick during Spygate. I was going to talk to you about, okay. that, about the relationship okay. between Coach Belichick and Mike Shanahan. Well, it must be pretty strong because... It is very strong. Okay, so Mike, go, go ahead. You, yeah. Mike has spoke in glowing terms. Skip, in 2006, when the Colts beat the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. the consolation prize to the team that loses the Super Bowl is that that coaching staff coaches in the Pro Bowl. Yep. CBS had the Super Bowl. Mm. They also had the Pro Bowl, so I got an opportunity to work the sidelines. Uh -huh. So during that week, I got an opportunity to talk 
to Coach Belichick. Now, get Coach Belichick away from the season. Yeah. Get him away from preparing for the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and he's a very engaging man. Yep. He's very, very smart. And I ask him, I was like, Coach, if you don't mind me asking, who's some of the coordinators that give you? The first name out of his mic was Mike Shanahan. Mm. He, had a, he has a great relationship with Mike. Okay. Mike has a great relationship with Coach Belichick because he's spoken in glowing terms about him. So Got I'm it. reading this, Skip. I am I'm probably the least surprised. Okay, fine. But I didn't know how close Bill had already become to Kyle. Kyle because this points out that Kyle met, quote unquote, for hours with Bill Belichick at last year's combine, combine. in Indianapolis to go over what did I do wrong in the Super Bowl collapse. Yeah. Help me out here. Talk me through it. Well, I, I got to tell you, that's a little offensive to me. It's a little out of bounds because you never know when you might have to cross his again. path again, right, in yep. some big game. Mm -hmm. And so why would you tutor him? Why would you mentor him? Why would you help him? Because he's become a head coach in this league. Yes. And, and you're going to probably have to deal mm -hmm. with him. And yet he did help him. And then, according to this, and I think that was pretty much already out there, Belichick contacted Kyle and said, hey, have I got a deal for you? I'll give you Jimmy G for a two, for a second-round pick. No negotiating. No, but here, I'll just do this. <laughs> and, of course, Kyle calls John Lynch and says, uh, I think he just said we can have Jimmy Garoppolo for a second-round pick. And they're like, yes. How fast can we say yes? We, we, yes. Do we need to drive yes, or can yes, we fly? Like, can we fly? <laughs> and, and it's a steal. And this points out it's a steal. And obviously, Garoppolo has played very well so far. Y y We'll talk about this a little later. You, you can pick apart the opponent so far, and you've caught people at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. He's six touchdowns to five interceptions, but he's also five and oh. And right. He's played very well. Yes. And he's got a future in this league. Correct. So is that a steal for a two? Yeah, it yes. is because you could have open marketed him and just said, come on, come all. And you know and I know that Cleveland had a stockpile of ones and twos, and you, you could have gotten a one and a two or maybe more for, right. for Jimmy Garoppolo from Cleveland. And the report was, well, Belichick didn't want to doom him to quarterback hell in Cleveland. Well, if you're a businessman, if you care about your future, you just can't help it. You just right. have to take the best normally, deal on the table. Normally coaches take the best. He, this is what he, we know about Coach Belichick. He thought so little of Drew Bledsoe. Not only was he willing to move him, he was willing to move him within the division. Okay. Now, the, pa the Colts turned the Patriots in with deflate gate. They did. They traded to Jacoby Brissett. Now, Cleveland Brown wronged Bill Belichick equally as the Colts had wronged the Patriots organization. Yeah, that seems like old news, but go ahead. The, the wronging of Bill Belichick right. goes way back. Yes. Yes. Because okay. Mr. Modell is long, long, long past okay. his then. Right. So, for him, it's like, well, I, I'll be willing to trade Jimmy to anybody in the uh -huh. AFC. No, you're not going to the NFC, AFC. You can go to the AFC mm -hmm. because I know what this man represents. Mm -hmm. You mess around and get the right coach with him and you surround him. Coach Belichick believes he can win a Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo. And, Skip, this is what we know about players, coaches with egos. I want to prove not only to the guy that I've won the Super Bowls with, I want to prove to everybody else. Shaq, Kobe needed Shaq to leave. Mm -hmm. In order for Shaq, Kobe to be viewed in a different light, That's he correct. had to win without him. He did, and he did. And he did. Mm -hmm. And Coach Belichick, you said 75-25. Coach Belichick, think about this, Skip. If he were to win one Super Bowl right. without Tom Brady, Said now it's 95-5 that is Bill Belichick. If he can pull that off, and I have grave doubt about that. He believed that but, he could with right. that guy. Okay, so he gives away Garoppolo, and, and effectively he gave away, and I said this the next day on the show, he gave away Jacoby Brissett to the team that Tom Brady hates the most yeah. because that team blew the whistle on him in Deflate. Deflate Gate. So it's like tweaking Tom Brady. It's like a gotcha to Tom mm -hmm. Brady there. And in return, you just don't take back a bust of a wide receiver unless you really think he's a diamond in the rough. And Chris Carter had made the point to me because he coached Philip Dorsett in high school in Fort Lauderdale that he's such a talented, such a great kid. He's, he's the perfect uh, match for Tom Brady. If you want a wide receiver, no. why not take Dante Moncrief? Well, they're not, not going to give you T.Y. Hilton, uh, right. but why not take the second receiver? Okay, you well, well CeCe thought that Dorsett could figure out how to become that 
that uh, an even better Edelman because he can fly, man. No. And, and again, he's not a deep threat. He's, he, he doesn't adjust well to the deep pass. Right, but Chris well. said he can catch the five yarder and turn it into 75 yarder. So I thought, okay, here we go. Well, so far this year, he's got 12 balls for a grand total of 194 yards and zero touchdowns. So you can argue he's been a quote unquote bust here as he was in Indianapolis. Correct. So that's a terrible deal because. I'm not saying Jacoby Brissett is a long-term answer as a starter in this league, but he's been pretty good this yes. year for a bad football team. Correct. He's got ability to, yes. be, to be at least a very quality backup, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay, so you gave away both of them, and then you, you've sort of declared war on Tom Brady, and I thought th this seems like a petty thing, but I think it's a big thing to Tom Brady because he's still got a lot of kid in him, like a lot of wide-eyed kid. He, he is a little ticked off that not one time this year did Bill Belichick make him the Patriot of the Week. That's a big deal, Skip. It's a big deal. Well, you It would be a big deal to you, right? I, yes. Yes. You play well, and you're like, okay, TD played well. Okay, John played well. Mm -hmm. Who's going to get it? Right. It's a, it's a big skill. And even if you had five Super Bowl yes. wins, which he does, and you have three, it would still be a big deal to you to be the Patriot we of the Week. We want rewards. Yeah. We want our yeah. coaching staff to think. Validate me. Getting... Yeah. Come on. And so I look down Brady's game by game, and there have been a lot of good – I, I think he's going to win the MVP. You don't think he should, but whatever. I think he's going to. Okay. Okay? So I look down the list, and, and remember, they get blown out and annihilated in the opener on Thursday night at Foxborough by Kansas City. Then he goes to New Orleans, and he goes 30 of 39 for 447, three touchdowns and zero interceptions. No Patriot of the Week. Then Houston comes. But he was uh, but he was AFC player. He was player. AFC player of the week. But we, that, okay, then just, just a few of these, <laughs> just a few examples. So then Houston comes to Foxborough with Deshaun Watson on fire, and Brady goes 25 to 35 for 378, five touchdowns, no interceptions, and a walk-off touchdown pass to win the game. No Patriot of the Week. And we can just keep on keeping on. Even like at Denver, the defense was still pretty good at that mm -hmm. point, and they went 41 to 16. Uh, New England does, and he goes 25 of 34 for uh, 266, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Maybe, you know, maybe at Denver, which is his house of horrors, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then big game against the Raiders in Mexico City, maybe, maybe not. But then at the Steelers, again, he threw for 75 yards just in the fourth quarter, and they had their biggest win of the year. No Patriot of the Week? I can see that. Really? No, Skip, I can see if they gave it to Gronk for the Pittsburgh okay, game. Okay, you could. But, though, but, though, but for All the right. New Orleans game, yeah. 447, 30 of 39, four touchdowns, zero yeah. picks. Oh, you get <laughs> – nobody else on offense, you didn't even think about getting that award that week. Okay. So, at the crux of this, the battle lines have been drawn over Alex Guerrero, the sort of personal trainer of Tom Brady. Correct. And, and, and he's a business partner now, and he runs what's called the TB12 Complex. Yes. And he has some sort of counterculture philosophies about how you heal football players. And Tom Brady is bought a thousand percent into Alex Guerrero. Correct. And again, it became a clash within the organization because some, according to this, some players felt a little pressure. Should we go to TB12 com complex or should we just use our trainer? And also, Skip, mm -hmm. if the athletic trainer says, this is the way I think you should rehab it. Well, they're going to him and he said, well, no, you shouldn't rehab mm -hmm. it like that. Yep. And Coach Belichick said, hold on, wait a minute now. Now, if you want to go get outside treatment on your own, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But you're not going to be in that building. Savage, basically, they feel like... He, I, I got that. that I'm, I'm with that. I get that. I, so do I. Yep. And it was reported that now that Guerrero had access to the medical records, mm -hmm. that that would be a no-no. He, he has said, absolutely, he does right. not. But right, whatever. that would be a gross, yeah, big, gross big. thing, no, no. Yep. And some people could get in some really big trouble for that. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand, Skip, and that's not uncommon. Uh, Romanowski had a massage therapist that uh, he, he liked, he and I tried mm -hmm. him, and the thing you know, he's working for the team also. Okay. So what Guerrero had, and what Tom, being Tom Brady's guy, mm -hmm. and what he was allowed to do is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon. So I don't want people to think, well, Tom Brady, no. If the guy works good and enough people go to him, it seems like, okay, mm -hmm. like it, he seems to be working. Okay, let's... Okay, so we, we both agreed earlier this year that, hey, if Tom Brady believes in that guy, you, you got you to gotta go with it. At least Let I'm going to try, okay? try him. Okay, and he believed, Tom Brady believes in pliability and right. lengthening the muscles. And according to this, he said sort of behind closed doors that Belichick's answer to injuries is lift more weights, That's which he does thinking. not believe. Okay, <laughs> That's the old school yes. philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so battle lines have been drawn here, but I want to point out to everybody that Bill Belichick has not one but two of his sons, his real sons, 
as assistant coaches on the staff. So there's some nepotism going on there. Yeah. So both of them have earned the right mm -hmm. over Super Bowls, five Super Bowls, to, to have some privilege within yeah. <clears throat> the organization. Yeah. Alex Guerrero, the trainer, two assistant coaches are your sons, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think there's some balance going on right. there. But in the end, is anybody surprised that the owner finally had to pick a side here? Because you've got to pick a side. And, and Skip, I think you and I always knew which side he would pick. Yeah. Because he, he, he views yeah. – he's made it abundantly clear how he views Tom. Yeah. Skip, he stood – even though uh, uh, he stood up for Spygate, he stood up in front of the owners and apologized. Yeah. I mean, he was almost in tears. Because Kraft, he, he, yes. Yeah, Mr. Yes. Kraft, because he was so upset yes. about what transpired. With the flate gate, he was almost thinking about suing the he league. Was. It yeah. almost re ruined his friendship, his relationship he with did. Roger Goodell. Mm -hmm. Roger Goodell, uh, uh, Jerry Jones and Mr. Kraft mm -hmm. are the two owners most responsible. Now, I'm not telling what somebody what I what I think happened. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I know. Yep. Those are the two guys most responsible for Roger Goodell having that job. And it, uh, this deflate gate almost ripped that apart. Now, this article says they, they become back close again. Okay, and by the way, that's no small detail because, again, with the little internal war Belichick on Brady, mm -hmm. now he's rekindled, has Belichick, his friendship with Roger Goodell, who Brady has hey. no use for. Yeah, you know, let's yeah. go. He okay. hates it. He just right. like because okay. he realized he, he like, wow, you put this stain on my resume. Okay. All right. So my bottom line takeaway is I think there's some sabotage going on here. And I think Belichick's going to be out after this year on his own volition, not fired. I'm talking about I think he wants out. I think he's had enough. Of I don't think he wants out, but I think, you know, OK, you chose him. You sided with him. I want you to see coach. This is what coach Belichick. He's a lifer. He's been in the NFL for 40 yeah. years. He saw what ha he see. He's seen. He he saw what happened yep. when Pittsburgh had no bridge from Terry Bradshaw to the future. Mm -hmm. He saw what happened in Miami. You, you can do a hundred examples. So you know, yeah. you you know, Skip. I agree, Coach Skip. On a Monday night football game, we're playing the New England Patriots. If I'm not mistaken, it's in 2002. Okay. Bill Belichick. They're backed up. I think they're on their like seven yard line, six yard line. He instructs his center to snap the ball over the punter's mm -hmm. head. He gives us a safety mm -hmm. because he felt that we might rush, block the ball. We're going to get the two point and mm -hmm. we're going to get. And so now so. what he does, you know what he does, Skip? He takes the safety. He gets the free kick. Mm -hmm. We let the ball. He plays the averages. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know what? We're going to play the averages. He punts the ball. The ball hits the ground. We pick it up. They stuff us. We got to punt the ball back to them. Brady throws a touchdown with like 30 seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. Here's a man that leaves no stone unturned in his preparation. Yep. And you mean to tell me he's going to leave the future? Mm. Mm. No way. No way, no how, Skip. No mercy. Let's get back to the big story of the day. We've been talking about it all show. ESPN's Seth Wickersham wrote about months of turmoil between Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and Robert Kraft. Now, all three have come out with a joint statement saying they share a common goal and are united. The statement also adds that it's, quote, unfortunate that there is even a need for us to respond to these fallacies. We are joined now by Fox NFL analyst Mark Schlereff. Mark, what is your takeaway yeah. from this story? Well, my, my takeaway is where there is smoke, there is fire. Now, this could be a unifying situation for the mm. Patriots, and they mm -hmm. use that kind of stuff to come together as a group and say, you know, everybody's against us, and yep. they've reported these things. That's a good point. I just know this. I, I know this, and, and I did a Niners game, and I talked at length to Kyle Shanahan about Jimmy Garoppolo and how they started a relationship with the Patriots going back to the combine and reached out, is he available? There's no way, you know, Bill Belichick wasn't letting him go, blah, 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 on and on it goes, right? Even to the point where there were reports out there, whether substantiated or not, that they actually, as a group, the Niners, reached out to the Patriots about then, if he's not available, what about Tom Brady? And so all this stuff went down throughout the course of, of going all the way back to last combine, and then all of a sudden the Patriots call Right? They call San Francisco a couple days before the trade deadline and say, do you want him? So, like, to me, something happened within that franchise. And this is the first time that I can ever remember the authority of Bill Belichick being usurped by the owner. 
if that in case is the fact. It's the first time that that has ever happened. And we talk about it all the time with your Cowboys. We talk with my former team, the Redskins, yep. about the owners Dude. usurping the authority of the head coach. This yep. is the first time that I can ever remember that happened. Whether it's true or whether it's not, the, the perception's out there. Where there's smoke, there seems to always be fire. But this could be one of those things that they rally around and say, okay, you know what? Um, We've been, I don't want to call it exposed, but but we've had some negative light shined upon us, mm -hmm. and we're going to rally together as a group because that's what we've already done, or we've always done, and, and we're going to go out there and win ourselves another championship. Um, but, yeah, I, I certainly think that there has been some, some authority taken away from Bill Belichick when it comes to the Jimmy Garoppolo situation. I don't see anywhere in the statement where it says in the 18 years we've had this kind of, stuff get out of this organization. <laughs> That's true. We've heard before that Coach Belichick and Tom Brady does not have the greatest mm -hmm. relationship outside of football, mm -hmm. but never like this. We've Things do not get, what do we say? Well, one voice, Coach Belichick, nobody else speaks. Mm -hmm. When things get out, of the, gets out of New England, it's because they wanted it to get out. Now, this got out. Somebody got access that no one else has ever had in 18 years. Now, there's a little stuff that gets out. You know, Peter King is really good with the Patriots. He has a great relationship with Coach Belichick. Mm -hmm. So he gets some information sometimes that nobody else gets. Yep. There are a couple, as you mentioned, Skip, there are a couple of uh, uh, reporters that have great relationships. Great relationships. With Coach Belichick. He will talk off the record, but he will never talk right. on it. Go ahead. Correct. This got out. Mm -hmm. This article right. was written... For some reason, somebody wanted it known what transpired, why Jimmy is out of there. And I said, I, Skip, you and I have been, I, I said, one year, two years, top because they got to make a decision. And I said, they got to make a decision after this year because Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be free. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to franchise Jimmy Garoppolo and play him more than the starting quarterback that's won five or six Super Bowl. That's not going to happen. So they got to make a decision. And Mr. Kraft's going to have to choose right. because already, it's already shaping up. You know who Belichick's going to choose, Coach mm -hmm. Belichick. So it's shaping up. Mm -hmm. The line is drawn in the sand. Okay, Bel Coach Belichick's over here. Tom Brady's over here on a straddle in the line. Now, he got to go one side or the other. I need to know where your allegiance is staying. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, I'm make, make it real easy. I'm going over here with Tommy. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I view Tommy as a son. I, I look at Tommy just like Jonathan Kraft. Jonathan Kraft is my blood son. Mm -hmm. Tommy Brady uh, Kraft mm -hmm. is my adopted son, and I'm going to treat him as if he's my own son. Yep. Skip, it's very abundantly clear to me because this is the first time that Coach Belichick, he wanted to hold on to this guy. He sees in Jimmy what he saw in Tommy. And he was so, he was so convinced that Tom Brady was the guy that not only did he trade Drew Bledsoe, who had a $100 million contract, Drew Bledsoe had the first $100 million contract. He, he traded him within the division. Right. No respect. Right. And, don't, and don't ever forget, don't ever forget, that when Tom Brady was a rookie, they kept and carried four quarterbacks on their roster. Mm -hmm. Unheard of. Unheard of because right. they saw something in him. And, and even in his second year, he didn't beat out Damon Heward for the backup. Mm. It was, But they saw what they thought he could be, and I think they saw a lot of that in mm. Jimmy Garoppolo okay. as well. So, I don't know this for a fact, but in reading all these tea leaves in Seth Wickersham's piece in ESPN.com, it smacks of the ultimate source was the coach, Bill Belichick. It, just quote after quote after nugget after bombshell after nugget. It's, mm -hmm. it, it feels like it's emanating from the head coach's office. It might be secondhand or thirdhand, but that's just my reading of all these tea leaves because it doesn't really have anything from Brady's side or Bob Kraft's side. And by the way, to the point that you made, uh -huh. we have speculated, I have speculated, that maybe if, if the owner didn't usurp the coach's authority, that Tom Brady next year would be playing for the San Francisco 49ers because yes. he's from there just right down the road, San Mateo area, mm -hmm. and it would be a nice fit if he thought, in fact, the team was on the rise enough that he could go actually win there, and that would be debatable. Right. But this is what's interesting about usurping. The owner clearly usurped the coach's authority, but then he didn't usurp his, his personnel authority. He said, you will trade Jimmy Garoppolo, but he said, 
didn't tell him you, what you, you, you traded. Can, you can do it. It's your, your ball game now. You, you figure it out. And I'm, I'm going to still say there's some sabotage going on here because he gave Jimmy G away to a Kyle Shanahan who he's now starting to treat like a son or a protege, you know, like a chip Mentor. off the uh, He's been mentoring him. Mm-hmm. And he called them and said, hey, how would you like? He, 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 he said, I'll, I'll do this for a two. Like right. there's no negotiation by all accounts in this story. Here, you want him for a two? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll take sure. it for a two. <laughs> and again, the Browns have a big stockpile of ones and twos. It, who, who knows what? And yet, if Jimmy G is becoming like a son to Bill Belichick, then maybe he's saying, there's no way I'm going to do you in by sending you to quarterback hell in Cleveland because that's a nightmare. But I will send you to the brightest young coach in football, an offensive mind in Kyle Shanahan. I'm sure he likes John Lynch, too, because who couldn't like John Lynch? And it's just a good new start for Jimmy G. And so far, so great, 5-0. So, to me, Bob Kraft now has to sit back and say, gee, if I usurp the authority by mandating you will trade him, maybe I should have let Jonathan, his son, Mm -hmm. who's now sort of the Mm quasi-GM, of the right, let, let him negotiate the trade, right? right? Let him work the phones on it. You Let him do it. You don't think the Broncos would have gave up a two for Jimmy Garoppolo's team? A two? Ab- yeah, ab- I, absolutely. But he, he made it abundant. He know what Jimmy is. You surround him with the right pieces? Yeah. I don't want to have to deal with him. At least if I have to deal with Jimmy Garoppolo, it's going to be in the Super Bowl. I'm not going to have to play him right. once a year or yeah. pro- possibly have to play him to get to the Super Bowl. I'm going to remove that stumbling block. It's like, skip it, okay. You will eat at that restaurant. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to order, yeah. but you will eat at this restaurant. Well, you kind of limited what I can do. You will trade Jimmy. Now, I'm not going to tell you where you're going to trade him to, but you will trade well, him. Well, now does he wish he would have told him that, that I'll yeah. take it over? Yeah. Yeah. Because you gave up a two. Skip, you could have traded him on offseason and, and at worst case scenario got a one and a two. Worst case. one and a three. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could have gotten a lot more. There is no <laughs> question about that. I, I will say this, though. You know, we make all we, – and it's news, and there's no question it's news because we've never seen this out of that organization Exactly. Before. But let me just tell you this. You and I won back-to-back Super Bowls. There was a lot of speculation that number seven, John Elway and Mike, Mike Shanahan had yes. a little bit of a yes. friction, a little bit of a friction relationship. We went from a stretch, our offensive line, and Alex Gibbs got in a big heated shouting match, and we didn't talk to each other for two weeks. Did not talk – he put the meeting up. We walked out after, after the meeting was done. We did not have conversations. We did not talk with our offensive line coach for a couple of weeks because there was such a heated mm-hmm. argument about something that everybody got, you know, really angry right, about. Too, but and, and guess yeah. what? You know, the next year, you know what we did? We put up 2,000 yards rushing. Uh, with our, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it just is, it, you know, it is the way it is. Yep. Mm. And that's, Sometimes that's, those things happen okay, in a family. You, you can work through these things. Yeah. I covered right. a Dallas Cowboy team that won its last Super Bowl after the 95 season. And Troy Aikman got sideways with Barry Switzer, and they refused to speak to each other from December 4th of that year all the way until after the Super Bowl that they won together mm-hmm. because they were just better than everybody else. Right. So you can, yes. oh, you can work, work through it. it. Yeah. yeah, you can be professional. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't have to like you. I'm here to do my job. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to like you. I'm here to right. do a job. Let me come in, do my job, and I'm going about my separate ways. I'm good. I'm yeah. cool. Yep. But it is better when you have great chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, hard, it's hard. Skip, it's hard for that yeah. position. Yeah, the quarterback and the head coach to not get along. I mean, there are yeah. there 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 are other because you're gonna have you know you're gonna go in and okay, what do you like? Blase blase. You're gonna yeah. ask you know. Right. The the reason this has worked for all these many years is that Tom Brady basically I think runs the offense and Bill is a defensive right. guy. So it wasn't like Bill was trying to impose his offensive no. will on the quarterback. No, but, right? what he, but what Coach Belichick can offer, he's going to tell you, okay, now, this is what I would do. If you came out in this set, yeah. this is what I would do. Yeah. And that's why a lot of great quarterbacks, they like defensive minds. Peyton Manning yeah. never played for an offensive minded quarterback I because what, what would you, if I did this, what would you do? In this down and distance, this area of the field, it's nice to know what a great mind would think mm-hmm. of what he yeah, would try does, and do. It does help. I agree. No mercy. The Panthers are a seven-point underdog in their wild card game on Sunday in New Orleans on Fox. The Saints swept Carolina this season, and Cam Newton struggled in both games. In those two losses, Cam threw three interceptions and was sacked six times. 
We are joined now by Rob Parker. Thank you so much for joining us, Rob. What's happening? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Rob, you picked Carolina to go to the Super Bowl. So Ugh. how much faith do you have in your pick right now? I'm, I'm all in, baby. You know? All in <laughs> with the Panthers and Cam Newton. And you know what? I know they've lost twice. they got to try to beat. Neither one of these teams have ever played anybody like three times trying to mm. uh, win three games in one season. It's it's. it's Normally, it's pretty hard to do. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I still like what the Panthers bring to the table, which is they were 5-3 and three against teams that finished over 500, 8-1 and one in one-score games. And the one, to me, their signature win this year is when they went up to, Green, uh, went up to uh, Foxborough and they beat the Patriots. Mm -hmm. So I look at that stuff, and I like the, the body of work of what they're able to do. And they remind me of two teams that I think – they might take the same path to get there. They remind me of the 2010 uh, uh, Packers and the 2007 Giants. If you remember, they had to go on the road, had to face some really tough opponents, and they were both able not only to get through it but to win Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. So it is doable. I get the Saints are in the way. I get their running attack. I get that they were able to beat them the, the first two times. I still like Cam they have the experience from a couple years ago when they made the long run. They went to the Super Bowl. It's not like they're going to be shocked to play good teams in hostile environments. And I know Cam hasn't put up great numbers, but what they have done, Skip, is that they've won those games. And, and, and Cam has done more, a little bit more, maybe running the football and having two or 300 yards passing, but he's been able to, to, to uh, score touchdowns without a lot of uh, picks. So here it is. If they keep it under... Two turnovers. Keep it under two turnovers. Yeah. They're 11-1 this year. Yeah. To me, that's the key. Play mistake-free football, and they will be able to be marching in New mm. Orleans instead of the Saints. Mm. I got the Saints to win this game because I believe in the NFC, the top two seeds are on backup quarterbacks. I believe Drew Brees can do the least in this team win because they have that dynamic running attack. Agreed. Drew Brees completed 72% of his passes. Think about this. We're talking about a running attack mm -hmm. with a guy that's playing quarterback that's won a Super Bowl, was the MVP, and has five 5,000-yard passing seasons. And he's the second. He's, the, he's B. The A is that, Ingram and Kamara running the football. That is a fact. If you, th if you look at it, and Skip, I, I agree with you, Rob, but Skip, he concerns me with the turnover with Cam. Besides, he's never won a playoff game away from home. Never. Drew Brees, and I, and I wrote this article with uh, John Saracino when he was at USA Today. Mm -hmm. I said what Drew Brees accomplished the year that he won the Super Bowl was the greatest run a quarterback's ever been on because he beat Kurt Warner, a two-time MVP, mm -hmm. and in the Hall of Fame. He beat Brett Favre, a three-time MVP, in the Hall of Fame, who had won a Super Bowl. He beat Peyton Manning, a five-time MVP, with four Super Bowl appearances. So ten MVPs with nine Super Bowl appearances. He had a bounty bowl defense to yeah, back him up. Go ahead. Hey, yeah. whatever, whatever works. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I just believe that Drew Brees, of all the quarterbacks that's in the NFC, I trust him the most. Yep. Because he's been there, he's done that. Yeah. We know uh, Matt Ryan won the MVP last year. The year before that was Cam. But Drew Brees is the only one of these quarterbacks that's gotten to and won a Super Bowl. So I trust him the most. Cam, I just oh and two. I mean, the, Drew Brees doesn't lose in the playoffs at home, averaging 37 points a game in that dome. That dome will be rocking. It'll be rocking. Um, they'll, pro they'll get two turnovers out Cam. And I think the Saints will win going away. You ever hear of uh, upsets? You know what? I'm a, that's the hope. He's the hope. <laughs> Hater of all time. <laughs> That's what he is. He, all keep, he got goat and, and loan and the folk. And now He's the, the hope. hope. Mm. <laughs> Rob Parker, you have done it again. Uh -oh. You have managed to doom another team. <laughs> picking that team. Yes. <sighs> to use Shannon's word, Cam Newton is going to have to be transcendental to win this game. Yes. He's going to virtually have to do it by himself in – Maybe the hardest place to win a playoff. It's it's just hard there. It's just it's crazy loud. And Drew Brees is much better there than he is away from there. Correct. And Cam just doesn't have much around him. It's really Cam or bust. We talked yesterday. He's got to keep running. The he football. needs to do the most for them to win. They won eleven games. They the won eleven side. games with okay. with Cam being having to be Cam. Okay. That's not nothing. That's All nothing. Right, to but I'm going to remind you that since 2000, the team that swept the two games in the regular season is eleven and five in the playoff match. 
So it, it, do I think that uh, you, it's hard to win three times? No, I'm, it's, it's not that hard, and it was pretty convincing. It was 34-13 to 13 at Carolina, and then it was 31-21 at New Orleans. So what's going to change? Because Cam can't even rely on a defense that in his MVP year was what was it in the top two with Denver's? Yeah. 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 yeah but this one is in the, is number it's, seven, isn't it? No, uh, it's 11th in points allowed and in turnovers forced. It's it's fell, fallen all the way to 15th. And that they year it led. It, it led. Correct. It was just like every time I looked around, they were intercepting Tony Romo again and running it back. Keekley was and, running it back. Yeah. Davis was running it back. Uh, Josh yeah. Norman. They, they were just on that emotional sort of magic carpet roll. Yes. And I don't see this team being on that roll. And, and he's throwing to Devin Funches. It's just not good enough. And little Christian McCaffrey has a big heart, but he's not a difference maker. So I, I don't know. Cam's the leading rusher. And to your point, he's got to take some chances throwing it downfield. And if, if he throws it to the other team, they're going to lose. No, if, they do, if he does, yeah. they will. But, but, but also I think sometimes uh, the pressure's off from – what they've done. They're, they're the underdog. Well, you know I what I mean? Like, like, like you go point, win, yeah. you're seven-point yeah. underdogs. They're, you're not you know. supposed to win. Yes. I mean, you can't go in there playing scared or being afraid that, that, that you can't it, make it happen. Does it, con- it d- does it concern you that in nine of his 16 games, Cam Newton is thrown for under 200 yards? That doesn't bother me because they were winning and he wasn't turning the ball over. I mean, Cam I, is an MVP. No, I, I get it. The numbers, though, but sometimes those, those inflated numbers – are bloated anyway. That was always my, my argument with uh, Stat Patford, you know, in Detroit. <laughs> Stat. You see what I'm saying, Skip? This would be. Mm. But you know what I mean. Well, like, that one I can't argue you. can't with argue you. anymore. Have you, you got enough me. order? I got you I, on it. I like watching Matt Stafford play, but I can't, you say, where's his signature win? I don't know. He why. didn't have one after no. nine years in the NFL. So my Matt point Patford. is. Matt Stafford. That's. that's Stat Patford. Yeah. But the point is that sometimes those big numbers are hollow and they don't mean anything. So I'm not always – you don't always have to throw for three or 400 yards. It's about winning the game and for doing 200? what you need. No, I, I agree. And, and by the way, Cam's signature this year was at Foxborough. Yeah. And Bill Belichick, we've been talking about him, he, he wasn't very good that day because his defense was pretty awful because it gave up 36 oh, points. Yeah, Brady time. put up 33 and it wasn't enough. That defense is still there. I want mm-hmm. you to know. So when we talk about the AFC, oh, uh, oh, hold on, what I, I, hold on, the Skip. Patriots defense. Hold on, hold on, hold on for a second. Hold on, what what'd you say? How many points did they give up? Thirty-six. Oh, and Brady couldn't win a game. Thirty-three. Aaron Rodgers. Thank you. When the team's giving up 51, 30, 45, points? 38. Thirty-three. Well, they almost 40. won it. That's all I would need to know. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I need. A, I like to lay it. I like spring that. that trap. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, 5-6 and six in oh, the postseason since he won his one and only Super Bowl. Case closed. He's 1-0. Oh. He's, oh. He's, He's a thousand close. percent. 1-0. and oh. Yeah. Thousand only 1-0. Oh. Wow. Hey, it happens. That's yeah. pathetic. I, I, I think if they get by, though, I really do. If the Panthers can get this – is the, this is the toughest. Oh, the first game is always right? the toughest. Yeah. If you get past this, they can make a run. I'm they get, a they're going to get there. What Put your that? face on it with the hope. The hope? Is that where I am now? <laughs> the hater of all time. <laughs> I'm not that – I don't hate anybody. I like you, Chan. No, no, no. Anybody that's skipping that pick, mm-hmm. no. The Patriots, <laughs> I mean, the Saints, I mean, everybody. <laughs> but don't you owe Cowboy. me a uh, lunch from the other day? Oh, that's Ooh. true, a wings lunch. Uh, oh, you Straight did cash, homie. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm doing this favor for you after the show. <laughs> 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 that's your payoff. Oh, that's, that's, a payoff. A payoff? Yeah. that's your payoff. That's your payoff. Skip's not asking for a payoff. He's going to just do it. No, he's not. Yeah. Skip. I'm your friend. Thank you, Skip. Rob, no. thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. No mercy. The NFL playoffs get underway tomorrow. The Patriots enter the playoffs as a big favorite to win it all ahead of the Vikings, Steelers, and Saints. According to Westgate, the Eagles' odds have dropped all the way to 15-1 to following the injury of Carson Wentz and a bad finish to the season by Nick Foles. We are joined by FS1 NFL analyst Eric Dickerson. Mm. Eric, give me your picks to win the NFC, the AFC, and the Super Bowl. Mm. Mm. Who you think I'm saying? Who you think, who you think I'm gonna second win the uh, NFC? Uh, I know, look, team look. nearby, where we are, <laughs> Los Angeles. Uh, you know, Skip, just for you, n- no, I'm not gonna pick the Rams. Really? I, you know, I, I know, I know you well, thought you I would. You should do it just for you. I can't. I, you know what? I don't want to be a, I say a homer. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't be that guy. You don't want to jinx them. I, I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to jinx my team. You know, I'm gonna go with Carolina. I, you know, I, I, you're I, going. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Carolina. I, I said, I said Carolina. Oh. I said Carolina was playing well. Four weeks ago, five weeks ago, I said they play playing really good football. You did say that. I liked the way they uh-huh. playing. Uh, I know one thing that Cam has the tendency to turn the football over, but I think in this game here, 
this is a big, it's hard to beat a team twice, and it's really hard to beat a team three times. Um, Cam is a big factor in this football game. The real, mm -hmm. as you call Sean Lee, Lou Keekly, <laughs> that defensive leader, wrote this. <laughs> yeah. I think is a leader that for sure is a leader of that defense. And I just like Carolina in this football game. I think that they're the team to beat in the NFC. Uh, and as um, far as the AFC goes, I can't go with your team. I know you love the Patriots. I got to go with the Steelers. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Steeler guy. I, I think one thing. I think the big thing in this football game is the injury to Ryan Shazier. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be surprised how hard players play when a guy, when one of their teammates go down and they want to make a statement. Mm -hmm. I know that the Patriots beat him in, in in Pittsburgh. I still think that that was a catch for a touchdown, but that was that's neither here nor there. I think that if most definitely if they have Antonio Brown back. That is the X factor in that football game. But right now, I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the, a in, the, in the AFC to win it. And I think to win it all, I'm going to go with the Steelers. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards the Saints in the Pat Super Bowl because I think the, I, I trust Drew Brees in the NFC the most. The two top seeds are playing with backup quarterbacks. And I think because Drew Brees has been there, and I believe he can do the least and still win because their mm -hmm. run game is so dominant. Their defense is better than advertised. I mean, they're not they're not the 2000 Ravens or they're not the Broncos of 2015, but they get timely turnovers. They can get to the quarterback. They're and, tenth in points allowed. Right. Not bad. Not bad. Mm -hmm. um, and the Patriots. This upheaval, drama, whatever's going on behind the scenes in New England will have no effect. Mm -hmm. They're a game by game. They keep their eye on the prize. They don't get mm -hmm. distracted by what could possibly happen a month from now, two months from now. And if you watch them, they're going to practice in the bye week with that bomb cyclone mm. hovering above their stadium. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, Coach Belichick, come on now. That's for sure. I mean, this is real. I mean, come on, Coach. Like, that's, uh -huh. that's that show, too. Because you, know <laughs> you know what he's saying? What happens if it's like that when we play? Yeah. So I need to get you prepared to play in that. Remember, Skip, that's what we're saying. Yep. You're the guy that prepares this team for all situations. And he gonna get rid of two quarterbacks and not be prepared. Something's going on mm -hmm. with that. So I'm gonna take the Patriots. I'm gonna take the Saints. And um, I had this. I had the. Uh, I had earlier. I had Seattle, but they didn't make it. So I'm gonna go Patriots Saints, and I'm gonna say pass get uh, number six. Really? So I am with you on the Saints because I will be shocked if Cam Newton can rise above this football game this weekend and win at New Orleans because that is hard. And I'm gonna say it again. The best stat is that since 2000, the team that swept the regular season is 11-5 and five in the postseason matchup. So the Saints have won pretty easily twice, and I think they're going to win pretty easily again as a seven-point favorite. And I hate that you're putting even more pressure on Cam Newton because he doesn't deserve it. He's played the best he can play with what he has to work with, which is not much. It's Devin Funches or Bust at the wideout. It's Cam running the football. He's the leading rusher for the football team. And I still say little McCaffrey's got a big heart and he's got some talent, but he's not a difference maker that I think they thought he would be to take some pressure off Cam. And the defense has not been that 2015 top two defense that led the NFL in takeaways. It's 11th in points allowed and it's 15th in takeaways, so it can't save Cam when he right. needs to be mm -hmm. saved. So I don't see it. I that would be it'd be fun to watch, mm -hmm. and it, he's he's going to have to be MVP good man yeah. because he's going to have to rise above all that. You know, sometimes it's not even about the numbers; it's about when you get hot at the right time, and, and you have yeah. and you have a, a healthy football team. It was like the uh, the Giants in what 2007. Okay. Yeah, you know, everybody said you know that uh, the Patriots are shoe in this. When I, I took the Giants in that game in the Super Bowl, I said the Giants are getting healthy at the right time. They're playing very good football, you know, when they have to play for good football. Okay, but they had hung in in the final regular season yeah. game with the record-setting Patriots, right? Mm -hmm. they, we went to the last drop. Right? I bet, Cam, you can think about this, Skip. The Carolina Panthers let Ted Ginn go. He goes to New Orleans. They would love to have Ted Ginn Jr. Sure. right now in, oh. in Carolina because he's played well. He's played very well. Michael Thomas, that's what made it so easy to get rid of Brandon Cook, Skip. I know. Michael, the emergence, I mean, he has the most catches. He has yep. almost 200 catches yep. in two years. So that's why it was so easy for Sean Payton to move on. So Drew Brees has his lowest touchdown pass total of his career. career. And we are picking the Saints because of that. Well, because think, and one thing, they run the football. That's very, what I'm saying. Uh, they, they, I guess they, they, they can run the football. Yeah. Kamara and, 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 and Ingram, and Ingram they, they, they can run the football. Yards per attempt, they lead the NFL. And guess what? 
You got to kick the ball to Kamara. You just saw him take, yeah, one, take one back, the longest kick return touchdown in the NFL this year. Yep. So they they come up with so many different ways to get him the football. They hand it to him. They throw it to him. You got to kick it to him. I st yep. I'm still going with Carolina. Okay. I, I like Carolina. So I'm still barely hanging on with the team I picked before the season, the Patriots, to win it all, as did you. You don't but like this article. Speaking of bomb cyclones, <laughs> this is the bomb cyclone, right? <laughs> but it did – call me a little bit that they have just released a statement in this is a joint statement from Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in that order. And if we could put it up on the screen, I'm just going to go ahead and read it for everybody's edification right now. For the past 18 years, the three of us have enjoyed a very good and productive working relationship. In recent days, there have been multiple media reports that have speculated theories that are unsubstantiated, highly exaggerated, or flat out inaccurate. The three of us share a common goal. We look forward to the enormous challenge of competing in the postseason and the opportunity to work together in the future, just as we have for the past 18 years. It is unfortunate that there is even a need for us to respond to these fallacies. As our actions have shown, we stand united. Well, bully for them. They should have done this. This is how you sort of clear the air and get ready for your playoff run. I'm, I'm not going to dispute a lot of this, and I still say it came from the Belichick camp or he was somewhat even secondhand the source of all this information. I believe he's still sabotaged the team. I believe he's declared war on his quarterback in little big ways. And yet, are they capable of pulling together and Absolutely. going to win a Super Bowl? Yes, they are, because they have been there and done that a whole lot. But one thing about it, when you play, when you play football, even if you haven't problems, marital problems, yep. whatever, in court, yep. you yep. know, when you go to that football field, you leave it all, you leave it all behind you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do agree with you at that part. You know, I, I think that that when they go out to play, they're going to play football. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, will they put this behind them? You know, will they will they be the same team they were in the last 10 years? Probably not. I, I don't think so. Um, I think that I always say that, you know, the owner has the ultimate say. That's Robert Kraft. You can tell that's that's re that very is. well written, you know, yes, probably by an attorney or someone, yeah. probably. you know. Yeah. So, you know, that's probably not how they really feel. We'll never know how they really feel unless you really close to We'll find to out how they really feel very shortly here. Yeah. The, the article yeah. indicates that there's, after, some after the the, 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 there's some sadness yeah. hanging over the organization as they get ready for their playoff launch here, that, that it could be the last hurrah, hurrah. together. And it, I, I think it will be. Think about it, Skip. This. this is probably the first time mm -hmm. that Mr. Kraft told Bill, Coach Belichick that he had to do something. Mm -hmm. And this was enough to send him over. It's, it's like you tell somebody, what, Skip, you sign 5,000 autographs. You tell, you say, tell one person no, and now you're a blood. You're a bad guy. <laughs> you're a bad guy. One time. Mm -hmm. That is that, a fact. That Mr. Kraft mm -hmm. said, yep. you got to do this. After all the time, okay, Bill, that's what you want? Go ahead. Okay, Bill, that's what you want? Okay. You want his guy? Okay. You want to trade for the? Okay, so be it. The one time, and this was enough. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you, like anything, you're going to take care of your boy. And, and I'll say this again. That is Bill, I mean, Tom Brady and Robert Kraft, that is his boy. I mean, he, okay. he loves boy. him. You can just tell they are well, very uh, Tom Brady's very won very him a tight. bunch of Super Bowls, man. Not, it, he won Coach sure. Belichick a bunch of Super Bowl, too. But Coach Belichick said, I want to win a couple of more. Mm. But you ain't going to be here. Mm. You're closer to the end than the beginning. Jimmy Garoppolo is in the beginning. So, Shannon Sharp, yes. I'm going to remind you one more time. Okay. The New England Patriots effectively had only two pro bowlers because they got the fullback and the special teams players, yeah. right? Yeah. Devlin and Matthew Slater. Right. But they had Gronk and they had number 12. Correct. And that's it. Yeah. And they are now prohibitive favorites to go win yet another Super yes. Bowl. And it's mostly because number 12 is going to be the MVP. If they, if they just had one pro bowler, mm -hmm. as long as they got Brady. Okay. Because you look at, I mean, you like Mariota, mm -hmm. you like Alex Smith, you like Blake Bortles. Basically, the Vegas is looking at, you got one stumbling yep. block in your way, that's the Steelers, yep. who you've owned. Y you have, but to Eric's point, I, I do not condemn you for picking Pittsburgh because at some point you're going to be right. At some point. You're going to be got, right. They're you. just going to do it. They're going to break through. I, thank They're, you. I, what's Tom Brady? <laughs> Tom Brady lifetime is 11-2 and two against that franchise. Yeah. Well, at some point. He's, he might be 11 and 3. Yeah, well, it happens. It, it, As you, what do you say? It's football. It's right? football. Yeah. You, know, you know how it works. Yeah, I feel better, though, after I've beaten a team a couple of times. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you get overly confident. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, happens? Yeah, you get overly yeah, confident. Yeah. Right. No mercy. 
After finishing 7-9 this season and missing the playoffs for the first time since the 2008 season, the Packers cleaned house this week. General Manager Ted Thompson was demoted, and the Packers will also have new offensive and defensive coordinators, as well as several position coaches. This came after Aaron Rodgers was injured and missed nine games, and the Packers won just three of those games. Shannon, what do these moves say about Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> That there's no replacement for him, <laughs> Skip. These franchise quarterbacks, and I mean that in the in the true sense of the word. Teams are so dependent on these guys. This is not a Sam Bradford and Case Keenum filling, filling in for Sam Bradford. We're talking about guys like a Cam Newton, like a Aaron Rodgers, like a Matt Ryan, Tom Brady. Skip, it's hard to replace those type of guys. Now, we would look at the Patriots. I'm not Patriots. The uh, the Packers. Mm -hmm. Skip, I felt they held on to Dom Capers a couple of years too long. Because if you look right. at, in 2011, they, the year they won the Super Bowl, his first two years at the, at the helm, they were top five in defense. After that, they finished, never finished higher than 11. Aaron Rodgers putting up historic numbers, but the defense was not holding up its end of the deal. Ted Thompson was a guy that he felt he wanted to draft his guys, build his guys, the Packers, you know, Packers culture. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why the Packers wouldn't dive into free agency more than what they did. Skip, they had great success in free agency. Reggie White kicked this thing off in 93. I think he was a success. Charles Woodson, I would say he was a success. Yep. Julius Peppers, I would say he was a success. So I don't understand why they wouldn't. And also, you look at it, Skip, T.J. Lang, they let, they let him go. They, Josh Sitton, they release him. Treader, the center, they release him. And if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm looking around like, whoa, I, I get it. You've given me some nice toys outside. We got Randall Cobb. We got they Adams. Do. We got we got Jordy Nelson, you know, yep. tight end. Okay, I get all that. But what about what who, who, who gonna protect me? Yep. You notice. Know now, Dom Capers, I believe I don't advocate anybody, but I thought he should have been relieved of his duties a long time ago. Edgar Bennett. Edgar Bennett had offensive coordinator and name only. You saw who was calling the plays on the sideline, Skip. Mike McCarthy was calling the plays. Mm -hmm. He gave it up for a while, then he went back. Yeah. You know? um, Ted Thompson, okay. Maybe maybe the guys that they were drafting, they weren't coming along as, as well as they'd hoped. They did let Micah Hyde walk out the building, and he's in the Pro Bowl for he's Buffalo. He's a player. You know? Skip. So everybody, everybody's at fault except Mike McCarthy, who got an extension. I'm missing something here. Hmm. So you trying to tell me Ted Thompson let this Packers organization down. Edgar Bennett let this organization down. Dom Capers let this organization down. Mike McCarthy didn't. I'm missing something here, Skip. This injury had everything to do with their season. You know this, Skip. With the way they defense play, Aaron Rodgers, is the, it might be the best deodorant in the NFL because whatever stench that defense can put out, he can cover it up. He can mask it. Mm. No, nah, this is unacceptable. There is no way if you make these kind of, this kind of wholesale changes within the organization – Two coordinators, the general manager gets relieved of their duties, and you extend the head coach. So you basically say it's their fault, and you're absolving the man that has the most influence on the wins and losses, the head coach. You absolved him of all responsibility. That's unacceptable, Skip. You and I both know. I, Mike McCarthy's won a Super Bowl. He's had to play, uh, uh, been to the championship game several times. But for him to get an extension while all the others get blamed, left holding the bag, I don't, I, don't agree, I don't agree with that decision. Okay, you make a lot of fair points. I really don't agree strongly with any of your points, although I have had in the past respect for Ted Thompson. And I agree, he's let some players go, but he's picked a lot of good players Correct. over time. But after a while, you just got to change the scenery. You got to move the deck chairs around, as they say on the Titanic. It's not the Titanic yet, but you got you to show Packer Nation we're doing something. What about the Dallas coach? Cowboys just fired three assistant coaches. Okay. So what? Mm -hmm. Right? So. But you don't think Jason Garrett doing any coaching anyway. Well, I, yeah, he's the puppet. But back to these guys. <laughs> I just don't feel about Aaron Rodgers the way you feel. You say he's the greatest thrower of the football Absolutely. ever. Absolutely. Okay, I can give you that. But a quarterback throws – and the quarterback also has to have impact. And I don't see Aaron Rodgers have the consistent impact, and you, we've been talking about him, we're going to talk about him all day, that Tom Brady does. The ultimate deodorant in the history of pro football is Tom Brady in Foxborough for Bill Belichick. Because I don't see Aaron Rodgers be able to rise above or lift 
mediocre to sub-average talent the way Tom Brady consistently has for year after year after year in Foxborough. I don't see Aaron Rodgers being able to, to transcend his talent or his lack of talent. And in some cases, there is a lack of talent. But to your point, going into this year, USA Today ranked all the receiving core in the, the NFL, and number two on the list was the Green Bay Packers because they did have Jordy and, as you point out, Devontae and Randall Cobb. And they had Martellus going into the year, obviously, and Geronimo Allison, who's not bad. So you have a pretty deep group of receivers, and yet he, he got hurt. So we got to disqualify this year. It's just incomplete. And with the exception of Adams, you tell me what those receivers looked like. You tell me what Jordy Nelson looked like. You tell me what Randall Cobb looked like without Aaron Rodgers. Okay, but I can say the same thing for what Brady does with the various little Edelmans and Amendolas and Chris Amendo Hogan. Amendola and was looking good with Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett. Mm -hmm. So with Hogan, they were looking real good. Skip, I don't know about you, what you no, saw. I, you remember, I didn't see Hold that. up. You remember they went on the Sunday night? They went to Arizona? Yeah, they shocked them. Oh, yeah, they Arizona shocked them. wasn't ready for it. Okay, yeah. what about when they came back to Miami? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo had three touchdowns and no interceptions mm -hmm. in the first half. Oh, that, that was a shock, too. Okay, what about Jacoby Brissett on that Monday <laughs> night against the Houston Texans in that defense? Okay. And then what did Tom Brady do after that when he came back? What happened? They lost what? The they Super Bowl happened. Yeah, skip, yeah. skip. I'm not skip. Right. See, you're splitting hair. Mm. You, okay, okay, I'm glad you say that. So are you saying that Mike McCarthy is the equal coach to Bill Belichick? Are you saying that Bill Belichick coach defense or Tom, Dom Capers coach defense are equal to that of Bill Belichick? Because if I show you the numbers, number one in scoring defense, fifth in scoring defense, seventh mm -hmm. in scoring defense, third in scoring defense, the Packers are not in there. They mm -hmm. haven't been above... Since those first mm -hmm. two years, Skip. Yep. I'll give you that. Bill Belichick is really good at coaching defense. Really? But Tom Brady has allowed Bill Belichick to get away with near murder of just getting rid of player after player like, what? What are you doing? Chandler Jones, he should still be a Patriot. He's really good. Yeah. You don't think they'd be better right now with Chandler Jones? And he wouldn't want a Super Bowl without him. Okay. So, and Jamie Collins was a Pro Bowl player. Again, I wasn't that big a fan of Jamie Collins, but he has the capability because he's got number 12 who can deodorize everything. Send him out. Send him out. I'm going to look like a genius because I can pull this off over here. Well, really, your defense has been pretty average this year. I don't care what you say. Over, time, over yards allowed. I know it's been don't break. They still allowed the 29th most yards in the NFL. And the Broncos have a top five defense in yards allowed, but 22nd in scoring D. Can you tell the people at home what the Broncos record, and can you tell the people at home what the Patriots record? Well, the Broncos obviously don't have a quarterback. And New England has the very best quarterback. And Green Bay has a top five quarterback who has struggled since he, he got to one Super Bowl in his career. And he won it. And guess what? It was seven long years ago. It seems like it's 14 years ago. Yeah. And since then, Aaron Rodgers is five and six in the postseason. But you want to just deodorize all that because... I, I'm doing what you did because when Tom Brady had gone a decade, you still said he was the best quarterback, and he had gone a decade without getting to the Super Bowl. He's but, won five Super Bowls yeah. and seven, should have won six. Yeah, all I'm saying okay, is... Well, let's, let's look quickly at what Aaron Rodgers has done in the postseason since he won his one and only Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So he lost at home to Eli, and he lost at home to Kaepernick, and then he went to Kaepernick and just got annihilated, and you can put that on the defense, but Aaron didn't play very well in that game. Then he did lose in overtime at Arizona. I'm gonna, I'll just wipe that out. It was just a bad year for both of those teams, but last year he got routed at Atlanta, right? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even close. It, yeah. Okay? Yeah, and, Atlanta did go to the Super Bowl, but right, okay. okay. They did right. have the MVP, okay. led the league in scoring, led the and league in yards. lost okay. to Tom Brady. Okay, okay. Okay, so then let's look at the wins, those five wins. He beat Joe Webb of the Vikings, mm -hmm. started for the Vikings. He, he won at Kirk Cousins, who is now 1-6 against the Dallas Cowboys and 0-4 against Dak Prescott. The Dez robbery gave him one that he didn't deserve he at did. home. It was a robbery. No it was a catch. catch. You know it was a no catch. But I'm, catch. Okay. And then last year at Jerry World, it took Mason Crossbar making two cross-country field goals of 56 and 51 yards with hand of God helping the ball through the upright in both cases – to save Aaron Rodgers from defeat there after a 21-3 lead. Is that his fault? I don't know. If you don't mind me asking, Skip, can you tell the people at home how many points that Packer defense gave up, mm -hmm. that it took the two hands of God for mm -hmm. Mason Crossbar field goal yeah. to go in? But how as you always ask me, 
Did Aaron have the ball back in the second half? Could he have just ended it? Could he have driven did. nails in the he coffin? He did. He did not. He did. The field goal kicker drove the nails in the oh, coffin. Oh, but you didn't say that about Tom Brady? Okay. Leading those 56 field. and 51? And, Are and, you kidding and me? Game, in the first Super Bowl and the second Super Bowl, how did the Patriots win? Mm. Adam Vinatieri. But who led the drive to set him up? Tom Brady. Okay, so Aaron yeah. Rodgers led the drive to set up crossbar. I guess you set up a 56-yard field goal. Skip, don't, don't do know. That's like more than half the football field. Let me ask you a question. Which is more pressure, a 56-yard field goal in the divisional game mm -hmm. or a 48-yard field goal to win it all? Mm. Which has more pressure? Well, obviously the Super Bowl. Okay. And but, of course, of the five wins, I left out the best one, and that featured Odell Beckham Jr. leading a lot, a yacht club of receivers down to South Beach to bask in the sun on a yacht to get ready for that playoff game at Lambeau Field last year. So it's kind of disqualified. That's not Aaron I mean, Rodgers' fault. Okay, okay, but I mean, it's it's a gimme for Aaron Rodgers because Odell in the first third big down of the big third down of the game drops the ball. And they just went in the tank after that. So it's like a home gimme. So I just don't think he's been very impressive, he's but been, you continue to deodorize him in ways that are unfathomable to he, me. He's, he's Mitchum. That's the really? deodorant I've been using uh, since 1986. Uh. It's the best. It lasts for two days. Mm -hmm. Now, I take four showers a day. So I wouldn't much. test it, so, but I... I you, you should <laughs> use it on your feet. Four <laughs> showers a day? Huh? I need four showers a day. But anyway, Skip mm -hmm. Bayless, yeah. oh, see, but you keep glossing over the fact mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the Packers' defense has given up double the amount of 30-point games mm -hmm. that Tom Brady has faced in his 34 career playoffs. Mm -hmm. But you gloss over that. You gloss over that. No, I you remember don't that gloss over. I, all I know is that in this stretch in which Aaron Rodgers has gone five and six in the postseason, Tom Brady has risen above his lack of talent to go 11 and four. What and, about? And every year, every one of those seven years, he's been in the AFC Championship game and he's been to two, no, three Super Bowls and won two. If you don't mind me pretty, asking. Pretty great. Do you remember uh, when he lost in Seattle? Mm -hmm. Did Aaron Rodgers get the ball in overtime? What happened? Wh which game? In Seattle. The NFC Championship game. You know what? That was Aaron Rodgers' worst game of the playoffs. And I, I oh, let you cast. off the hook, and with, now you with, brought it back no, up. Okay. I wasn't going to do it, but he was widely, roundly criticized within the state of Wisconsin for having, by his standards, a lousy He did game. have a torn calf, but okay. I'll give game. you that. Okay, what about Arizona? Mm. You remember the Arizona? I, I brought it up, yeah. No, no I'm talking about the walk-off, the, the overtime. Yeah. He lost that one. Oh, what about the Arizona game in which the team, the defense gave up 51 points? Did you make, bring up that game? I don't see it over there. Okay. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Alex Curry in for Joy Taylor. Undisputed will be back at the same time on Monday morning, 930 Eastern. Have a great weekend, everyone. Facts, sports, one of one.